Today on Outside the Box Reviews, we are taking a look at the Universal Select Wave 3 Phantom of the Opera figure. And this is the Toys R Us exclusive version. Now in all these reviews I've done so far, most of the time I've opted for the deluxe figure, which is usually the easier to get version of this figure. It's a little more expensive, it comes with a lot more crap. But two separate times in the Universal Select line, they've made the variance between the Toys R Us and the deluxe versions so severe that it does actually make it worth picking up too. And in this case, they did the Phantom of the Opera in his mask. The deluxe version was unmasked and I picked that up at the time feeling that was the much more iconic version of the Phantom. But as time went on, I really started to want a version in the mask. So when this came up in a lot of figures on eBay, I decided to snag it. The Phantom comes with a pretty basic display base. It's a tile floor or a stone floor. We got some moss growing on it. We got two pegs coming out of it. Kind of a rough edge around the side of it, all the different tiles. Nothing going on underneath. It's a nice looking display piece, helps him stand, and it's not a huge shelf hog, which is a plus. This is basically the exact same stand the deluxe version came with, so if you have that version, there's no difference. But he also comes with a smaller display stand, same basic deco here, single peg in the center. I assume if you wanted to be creative, you could probably find a way to line these up and make it look like it was matching, but I'm not really going to put that much work into it. And that stand is for his music stand, which is pretty nice looking. It's a nice brown. I kind of wish there was a little more black wash or something on it. There is a black wash on it, just not very thick, but it's a really cool looking stand, very ornate up here at the top. We actually have a swivel joint here. At the neck here, it almost looks like it should be able to pivot up and down, but it actually doesn't have that ability. And then it becomes squared off here on the stand part itself. And then a fairly ornate base at the bottom. And you can see right there is the peg hole where you'd peg it into that extra bit. We also get the book, Don Juan Triumphant. This is the exact same one that came with the other version of Phantom, which would make sense because whether you're playing the violin or you're playing the organ you play the same music so it makes sense to have multiple copies and speaking of the violin this came out really nice they did a really good job with the wood tone there's a nice black wash over top of it as well highlighting some of the recesses the strings are well painted on there the kind of scroll up here at the top looks good the tuning pegs could probably use some paint to make them look like they're a different color same with the chin rest here i don't remember ever seeing that in a wood brown it would probably be black like this part right here but overall pretty nice looking. Then he also has the bow with it, which I feel like could use a little more work. It's kind of bland from the side, very squared off looking, because this should be hollow space right here in the middle, and it's just hard to do with plastic this small. It almost would have felt better if they used a wire or something to really bring out the look, rather than just a stripe of white paint on a brown plastic piece. The Phantom also comes with a cane, which I believe is unique to this version. The gold head here, the wood body to it, and then the gold tip down there at the bottom. He really can't hold this too well. I haven't been able to use any of his hands to grasp it. However, on the music stand here, there's a little place where you can rest it and it will sit. I originally thought that was for the bow, but the bow is way too large to hold that effectively, so it's gotta be for the cane. The Phantom also features some clothing accessories that make him unique. Up here he has his hat, which is a separate piece, but well done. It looks kind of like a faded cloth hat. You could pop that right off his head. He has his under hat, or whatever that's supposed to be down there. Kind of just a very skin tight cap underneath. And the face sculpt is the big draw for this figure, as opposed to doing the unmasked head. Here we have the white painted mask. Now I've seen other interpretations of this mask looking different because the movie was black and white, so we don't know what color the mask is supposed to be. And while I don't know if it's the originator, I kind of guess the Andrew Lloyd Webber play is probably what made them go with a white look. Seeing as the white mask in that version became very iconic. But we do have the eyebrows painted on, the eyes look good underneath, they're obviously fake eyes, not his own. Cheeks stick up really well and they have this kind of off-white piece here at the top, which is something from the film I find completely creepy. To hide his mouth without hindering its movement, he has this kind of like thin piece of cloth that you see moving as he talks. And I also just thought that was eerie as all hell. And you can see his deformed teeth underneath, and then his ears come around the side. Going down to the Phantom's body, we have this cloak, which is also unique. It's a big, bulky, soft rubber cloak. A lot of good wrinkles in it. Not much paint, just kind of a solid black, but it goes down to about his knees. And it's fairly nicely detailed, just in terms of sculpt. Now, being a rubberized piece, this is removable. See, it's a nice red on the inside as well. And once that's off the figure, we have the exact same body we have with the deluxe version. We have the tuxedo 
jacket here, complete with buttons and collar, kind of done in a more satin or glossy look. The vest, the bow tie, even little button detailing on his shirt underneath. Sleeves are hard sculpted. But on the back here, we have more wrinkles and seams as appropriate, more buttons and his little penguin tail back here. For his left hand, we have this big grasping hand. I felt like this worked really well with the organ, with the other version. But it's very deformed, very gross looking, kind of an odd flesh tone, which I think works really well for the Phantom character. On his right hand, it almost looks like he's about to throw the metal horns, but not quite. He's got his thumb sticking out and these two fingers elevated, the other two coming down. Now, this is something that kind of annoys me. I thought this was supposed to be for the violin because it looks like he's playing the violin here. It looks like he's fingering the strings. I guess it kind of works to hold the bow as well, but, but for it all to work out, he has to hold the violin in the other hand. But we do have an alternate hand for this side, which looks like a slightly more standard gripping hand. The fingers are still out of alignment, but I think this works a little better as just a normal gesturing hand. Going lower down, we have more detail on his pants. Really not a whole lot of color variation anywhere on the clothing on this figure, with the exception of the glossy black parts. But there is some nice kind of pleats and seams going through here, as well as the wrinkles. And then his shiny black shoes down here. For articulation, Wave 3 is where Universal Select kind of stepped things up. So we have the ball jointed neck. He doesn't really look very far up or down, but he will go side to side pretty easily, as well as tilt. Pin socket shoulders, so they'll go out to the side, as well as forward and back. Bicep swivel up here. Bend and rotation at the elbow, which seems kind of pointless when you have a bicep swivel. The wrist will rotate as well as hinge in and out. We have a cut joint here at the waist so you can swivel side to side. Legs, you can move forward, a little bit back as well as out to the side. There's an upper thigh cut. Single joint at the knee that bends about 45 degrees and a swivel at the foot. For a size comparison, on the left I brought in the gigantic Sideshow Toys version of the Phantom. I'd picked this up at a toy show a few months back because I was really wanting a masked version of the Phantom and here you can see they went with a more flesh tone look for his mask. But those old Sideshow toys are way out of scale with the Universal Select figures. And I kind of felt this one was overall lacking and really just wanted the Universal Select version. And on the right we do have the deluxe version of the Universal Select. Obviously the same figure, same height, but you can see the differences between the two. I think I made the right choice when I initially picked up this figure and got the other version. The unmasked version. Said it before in this review, the unmasked version of Lon Chaney's Phantom of the Opera is the iconic version. The masked version, I think most people wouldn't be able to tell you what the mask looked like offhand. I'm thinking 90% of people when they think of the Phantom of the Opera mask are gonna think of the white half mask as opposed to this one. The accessories he comes with are cool, but I don't think they're nearly as cool as the full gigantic organ. The cloak looks neat on the figure, but it does actually kind of hinder articulation by the way it's shaped. The hat's cool, but it's a hat. The cane is unique, but not really all that useful. And plus, the deluxe version is probably easier to come by these days than this one. You search for this on eBay, it's mostly going to come up with the deluxe version rather than the Toys R Us. So I'm glad I got this piece. I'm going to recommend it, but I'm going to recommend the variant a hell of a lot more. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, username Outside the Box Reviews. Also check me out on Facebook, link below. And until next time, this has been our Outside the Box Reviews. Stay tuned for more to come.